if you have entities out there that are going to feed off of anxiety, this is a prime hunting environment for them. So if you're if you're not uh, paying attention to the energy going on around you, you could really fall victim to that. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that there's some pretty warped, um, well, there's warped people out there too, but warped spirits that are just going to go, ooh, that tastes good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I yes, guess we're going to go to freaked out people. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I got it. Sometimes they can be disappointed. Sometimes they can just be uh, be energy looking for a home. <sighs> but yeah. I got a, another question from the chat room from Sherry. Um, she wants to know what you th uh, what you think about ascension into a higher spiritual role and vibration, and its effect on gifts one exhibits. Oh, I can definitely change who you have working with you. Um, I've seen before with mediums that are working in a very altru altruistic manner. And their gifts get better, but more refined. But then there's other mediums that slip and fall for monetary gain or attention or whatever it is. And their guidance seems to slip. And their readings aren't as good as they used to be. They're not as sharp as they used to be. Or they're not positive as they used to be. So definitely, you you know, following your and adhering to your spiritual practice, especially if they're positive, are, are going to improve your your gifts and your abilities and your intuition as well where that might lead you okay. I don't know if I answered everything did I? no, <laughs> no you're, question. you're good I think that was it so um, where where's the I guess the place that you've actually got the most activity at? Oh, definitely Gettysburg. Anybody that says that Gettysburg is not the most haunted place on earth hasn't been there yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, okay. and, that, and that was the funny thing is that, um, you know, when I started teaching my parapsychology classes, I came across, you know, a uh, friend of the show, Craig Rubb, yeah. uh, came across his infrared, uh, his famous shot from Warren Monument. And, um, it was copyrighted with his name on it, and I wasn't going to use it without permission, so I contacted him. And that's when he was saying, hey, you know what, you should, you know, you come out here, look, you know, look me up. And so when I got the opportunity, my dad retired, he had extra Recon Flyer points, and my brother was going to Jamaica, and I'm like, I'm going to Gettysburg. And they're like, what? Huh. <laughs> I'm like, I'm definitely going to Gettysburg. If I get the chance, I'm going. So, but yeah, he, even when he started driving into the, the, at the edge of town, you just feel the energy like it. I've never felt anywhere before. You can you can tell. The, yeah. You can definitely tell. And uh, I've had so many interesting experiences there. Not not always positive, but but definitely life changing experiences hmm. there. And mm -hmm. one of my favorites that I had was I was working a, on a remote viewing missing persons case when I went out to do some volunteering and I didn't tell anybody I was going. So I was still talking with the medium on Facebook and I'm at the historic location and he's like, can I call you? I said, oh, sure, go ahead. And so he called me, he says, he's an he was an anesthesiologist, anesthesiologist that worked in a hospital in Phoenix. But he was also a very good medium and uh, came from a long line of Quilandero, which is uh, Hispanic holy people. And uh, he's just like, I am here in the hospital in my office, and I feel like I'm talking to you in a hospital. And like, please continue. <laughs> <laughs> and so he literally walked me step by step through the house. He says, you walk through the living room, you turn to the left, and there's a display case right there. And he said, there are human remains in that display case that need to be dealt with immediately. And I was shocked hmm. because several of the people that used to do uh, metal detecting parties back in the 90s when the property used to be private uh, had returned artifacts to us through the mail <laughs> saying, uh, we didn't realize at the time when we did all this that this, you know, these things don't belong to us. They belong to the museum. They should be given back to you. And so they were put in the display case. And I noticed that there were some bone fragments in there. And considering the place used to be a, a field hospital where they did amputations and everything there. 
as like, how do we know that those bones aren't human? And oh, no, 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 the d director was absolutely positive. These were from the butcher's house out, out back and they're human or they're not, they're not human, they're animal. And, and the medium's like, absolutely not. Those are human, they need to be buried. Huh. And it's like, there's no way he could have possibly known that. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, oh, and then when you hang a left from there, there's a staircase that goes up the stairs. I said, yeah. Says, there's a lady up there in the master bedroom that's not very happy about her curtains. And it was so hilarious because the volunteer coordinator was there with me in the room. And I laughed. And she's like, what's so funny? And I turned to her and I said, remember the curtains that kept getting ripped down? She goes, yep. He says, he's telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I told you that. I said, the lady of the house doesn't like those curtains up there. And he just laughed at me. He's telling me the same thing. <laughs> Had he ever been to Gettysburg? He'd never been. He was from the Dominican Republic. Oh, huh. oh wow. And yeah, he got his, he, he got his visa and he was practicing medicine in Phoenix. So even when he was talking to me about, he says, I'm seeing guns on the property, big guns. And they have big wheels on the side. Do they have guns out there like that? Because the guns that we have in the Dominican Republic have these little carts with wheels on them. I'm like, oh, you mean like on the wooden sailing ship? He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, that's where we have cannons. But this guy is telling me this is how they move the guns around. Hmm. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And he said there are three guns on the property, two that belong, and then one that does not belong. And we had just found the day before, when we were clearing brush, two artillery divots or depressions in the ground where they had cut out sections of the land to, to mount the right. cannons during the battle. We just found those the day before. Huh. Wow. wow. And I, I turned to the voluntary coordinator and I said, I don't understand. The third that doesn't belong. And she laughed and she said, the garage up there next to where we cleared the brush? I said, yeah. That's where the reenactment cannon is. It's a replica. Uh, huh. <laughs> I had no idea that was even there. <laughs> wow. So, and that's one of those things as a parapsychologist you kind of weed through and think about because he wasn't reading my mind because I didn't have that information. Sure. <laughs> and so, yeah, he's obviously picking it up from somewhere else. You know, and the bone thing. I mean, obviously he was the one telling me they were human. I didn't know. So how, how did he know that you was in Gettysburg. He didn't. Well, how did he get a hold of you to, to call you? I mean, he called me on Facebook. Oh. It's called cell phone. Wow. <laughs> it's interesting you're bringing up battlefields and that, and today is uh, D Day. And yes, uh, it is. so one would think that Normandy also would be a place that is packed, although I think it's a national monument and I'm not sure how much visiting you can do there. Oh, you probably could visit it as a citizen uh, doing paranormal investigations. I'd be wondering if they would consider that in good taste. I don't know. Probably not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no. But yeah, yeah. my grandfather landed on the beach a couple of days after D-Day. He remembered seeing the guns and the helmets on the beach wow. when wow. He, he came off the, the boat. And so that was, yeah, I saw that the other day on Facebook. I'm like, yeah, that's right. It is. Mm -hmm. Wow. Fascinating. No, I'm sure there's probably quite a bit of paranormal activity over there if one were to look. One would think uh, there would have to be. The difficulty I would find, though, being an investigator or a medium over there is that Europe is so old. Oh, yeah. 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 What layer of history are you pulling up? When you're when you're feeling that that energy there and we had that problem in Gettysburg, too, when I was wandering around and uh, with other people that I was getting energy or actually feedback from different periods of time hmm. not just the civil war i mean we go to gettysburg thinking civil war you know right sure but there was somebody there that was probably from around the 1900s because they were listing family names within gettysburg but it didn't sound like they were attached to the battle in any way hmm. ah, that's very true. it makes you kind of wonder um what a sensitive archaeologist would be going through at any one time. Um, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? You're handling objects that sometimes could be thousands of years old. 
uh, and exactly what you would pick up in that. Oh, yeah. I had a, con uh, a friend of mine contact me and said, oh, my gosh, I need you to help me. I said, what's going on? Said, We're dealing with Holocaust artifacts. <laughs> what? I need help. <laughs> I'm touching these things. And she, you know, she's a medium anyway. And I said, you need a grounding stone. You need to go outside, either get a pouch of, of dirt out there or get a stone from out there and hold that at the same time as you're going through the archive because you're going to be picking up on a lot of stuff by, by touching those things. And she's like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I forgot about that. Yeah, you're right. Huh. So, so yeah. when, when are you going back to Gettysburg? Two weeks. In two weeks, you lucky. <laughs> well, I don't know how lucky I am. We'll see how how it is out there. Things are strange right now. Well, uh, last time I talked to Craig, he said uh, that he had taken private tours out on the battlefield, and he said they were just going crazy getting stuff because nobody had been out there for a long time, and it's like the the, the people out there was anxious to actually interact and talk. So, oh wow! So, uh, I, as far as everything else being opened up, I have no idea how much is actually opened up there yet. Yeah, I'm 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 disappointed. A couple a couple of my friends are not going to be in town. Um, I do have a friend of mine that's out at the seminary, um, hoping to get a a walk around there, have him uh, show me around. But. Um, yeah, I haven't really talked to him about my parapsychology part. We'll see how he feels about that because he's he's uh, <laughs> definitely going to be a pastor. Oh. Uh, but you know, of course, we'll we'll we'll, we'll uh, touch base with Mr. Craig while we're out there. Yeah, the Tabby but, Cat uh, probably be, be around. Fourth of July. It's it's, it's going to be really weird when you think about it. Oh yeah. I mean, there's no yeah. reenactment this year. No. They canceled that. Um, they weren't going to have it anyway. Um, they were going to have that political. Something, some sort of political conference, rah rah thing out there. Uh, I, I'm I'm having a hard time remembering who that was going to be, but that got canceled. So it's probably going to be the quietest Fourth of July in years. Well, if if the park is still not loaded with a lot of tourists, it'd be a good time to go out on the battlefield. I think it would. Yeah. So. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I'm I'm sure Tabby. I might also get a chance. I'm sure Tabby can be there too. Oh, absolutely! I'll be hitting her up when I get up there too. <laughs> There's a lot of people I haven't seen in a while, and then of course my friend out at the seminary—I didn't even know he was going. Huh. <laughs> was like, wow! Wait a minute, weren't you getting your degree in drama when I saw you last? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, this is kind of a big change for you. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> but, um, I won't get it. We have one question, um, and that is, what's the earliest? Uh, um, entity you've been able to pick up era wise uh, so you can't go back to the confederacy but uh, have you been able to go back further than that oh that's a little tough um, you know you get that mindset when you go into a location and that historic presidents of that location kind of is stuck in your head it's kind of hard you know and I've had that trouble with mediums too when they walk into a location like, only to Fairfield Hmm. You know, all the all we could get one medium to pick up on was Civil War. And I, I, I tried to explain to her that, well, you realize this building was built in. Don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me. Huh. And I'm like, well, then your mind is going to be stuck in exactly what you want to perceive. Right. If I don't tell you, <laughs> huh. you might see other things that will click with an earlier time era, but you're you're stuck here. So... Sometimes it is good for the medium to have at least a little information. Right. Right. Wow. Uh, so you're going to go to Gettysburg. Is there anything else that you've got that's going to be coming up? Um, I'm hoping to connect with uh, Dr. Larson out at the uh, uh, University of uh, North Carolina, Wilmington. Uh, he's uh, hoping to do a summer session uh, haunting class out there, and uh, hopefully that that will get off the ground. and And uh, I'm supposed to help him with that, so that'll be kind of fun to do university level. Right. <laughs> Continuing education. Well, you got the uh, battleship North Carolina. Um, mm -hmm. Before I got into actual ghost hunting or anything like that, when I was living there, um, I'd go out on it 
during the day sometimes if I didn't have anything to do and just walk around. There wouldn't be that many tourists out there. And it's really weird. You can climb up into where the big guns uh, fired from. Um, you um, can you can go down into the ship where the chow hall was and just I mean it's real interesting to walk through the whole thing but it's eerie if there's nobody else around and you're walking down through the bowels of the ship 